It's important to understand how a fire sprinkler system works to understand water supply needs. Sprinklers are linked by a network of piping, typically hidden behind walls and ceilings. A sprinkler is very simple, basically a heat-sensitive plug on a piping system. The plug is most commonly held in place by a glass tube that contains a liquid element that responds when the temperature near the sprinkler reaches 135 to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. At those temperatures, the liquid expands until the glass bulb bursts, releasing water. The deflector will properly distribute the water. When a fire starts in a room, smoke and heat will rise to the ceiling and then across the ceiling surface. When the heat surrounds the sprinkler, the heat-sensitive element will quickly reach the sprinkler's operating temperature. The plug will release and water will flow. Sprinklers operate individually and only in response to the high temperature of a fire. Smoke or steam will not cause a sprinkler to activate. Interconnected smoke alarms also cannot cause the sprinklers to operate. Only the sprinkler closest to the fire will activate, spraying water directly on the flames. In most home fires, only one sprinkler is needed to control a fire. In most rooms, a single fire sprinkler will provide enough protection. Some larger great rooms or kitchens may need more than one sprinkler or a specially listed extended coverage sprinkler. There are three main types of sprinklers, pendant, sidewall, and concealed sprinklers, which may either be for ceilings or walls. Fire sprinklers are good for the environment. According to research conducted by FM Global for the Home Fire Sprinkler Coalition, automatic sprinklers reduce water pollution. When sprinklers are present in a fire, the resulting wastewater has fewer persistent pollutants, such as heavy metals and fewer solids. In a sprinkler system, maybe nothing's discharged to the environment because it's only a few hundred gallons that might be contained right in the house. Whereas a larger flow is going to flow out into the street, it's going to be carrying the burned materials with it, there's contaminants with it, they get into the storm sewer, in our case, flows into the bay. FM Global's study, which captured wastewater from test fires with and without sprinklers, showed that the pH value of the test wastewater from unsprinklered fires exceeded the allowable discharge range of 5.5 to 9.0 required by most environmental agencies and was four orders of magnitude higher in alkalinity than the wastewater from the sprinkler test. Sprinklers can reduce fire damage by up to 97%, which means less waste is sent to the landfills. Sprinklers can reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 98%. The American Water Works Association recognizes the increasing use of residential fire sprinkler systems and encourages that they be designed by licensed or credited professionals and installed by licensed fire sprinkler contractors or properly trained personnel. NFPA 13D is the standard for installation of sprinkler systems in one and two family dwellings. Under 13D, two types of residential fire sprinkler systems are permitted. Standalone systems, where the sprinkler system is independent of the plumbing system. And multi-purpose systems, where the fire sprinkler system is combined with the cold water plumbing. Proper hydraulic calculations are paramount to life safety, so NFPA 13D requires that residential fire sprinkler systems be installed by qualified professionals. The design of a system requires communication with the water utility so that available water pressure and flow to the system can be determined, and the design can meet the utility's requirements. <laughs> 